Hi, this is Digital Fam, and welcome to Overland, the YouTube channel that focuses on the OVR.ai platform and its community. So subscribe to this channel if you're curious or interested about platform developments, interested about what the community is doing with their Overlands, otherwise known as hexagons or hexes, and why in the world would you want to join OVR.ai? So in today's video, I want to expand more on AR glasses. I did touch upon that when I did a video about Spectacles, Snap's new version for augmented reality glasses. And if you want to watch that video, you can click right here. So what I want to do today is to take a brief look on what type of augmented reality glasses are currently out there whether they are in prototype phase, actual working models, or just rumors. So this video is not going to go into detail about all the different types of augmented reality glasses, but it will definitely have a point. So if you want to hear about that, then continue watching. Okay, so let's get started. So a few years ago, I think back in 2017, Mark Zuckerberg in one of the Facebook developer conferences he had mentioned that Facebook would be developing and or committing themselves to creating augmented reality glasses or getting into the augmented reality space. So it's 2021 now. It's about four years and not sure of what's happening with that particular project. Now, there are rumors that Facebook augmented reality glasses may actually be coming out at the end of 2021 or early 2022. So in this fairly recent article on Forbes on February 28 of this year, the headline reads, Facebook AR glasses to release this year might include facial recognition. Okay, now there's a problem with that because facial recognition is definitely a privacy issue. And there will be a lot of people and communities who will oppose to this type of breach in their privacy. When we scroll down further, we find a tweet from Andrew Bosworth, who works for Facebook in the AR VR department. And he says, we've been open about our efforts to build AR glasses and are still in the early stages. Face recognition is a hugely controversial topic and for good reason. And I was speaking about was how we are going to have to have a very public discussion about the pros and cons. Now, it's interesting because when you further scroll down in the article, and I will put the link in the description to this article so you can go ahead and read it for yourself. But what's interesting is that you get a quote from Michael Abrash, who is Oculus's chief scientist. And you know that Oculus is owned by Facebook now. And he says that 20 or 30 years from now, I predict that instead of carrying stylish smartphones everywhere, we'll wear stylish glasses. Now, 20 or 30 years from now. So this is mid-2021. This sentence worries me a bit because, to be honest, I really don't want to wait 20 or 30 years for augmented reality glasses to be mainstream. Because if it's going to take that long, then that means that there are going to be so many more companies or players in the game of augmented reality. And the current ones now, if you are not Google, Facebook, or Microsoft, or Amazon, like who knows, then what is to become of all the um, companies that are developing AR platforms or spatial web platforms? So if you're curious about Andrew Bosworth, you can always follow him on Twitter at BosTank. And he also has a Facebook page where you can follow. And I'll just follow him right now. So moving right along, we come to a more recent article talking about Facebook's AR glasses. This one is entitled, Three Things We've Learned About Facebook's AR Glasses. Now you see Mark Zuckerberg, there is a glass image right behind him as he is presenting. And I don't think the image of these glasses have anything to do at all with the type of glasses that Facebook is creating. Um, so the, what are the three things? Number one, it says they might incorporate facial recognition technology. Now I'm thinking that's a big might because like I said previously, there will be very big issues with facial recognition and privacy. I mean, that's what happened to Google Glass. The fact that Google Glass didn't take off was because it came across those issues and it just like, it stopped, it halted that project because they had to rethink how this was all going to roll out. The second thing that they're saying that they know about Facebook's AR glasses is that they could come with a wristband, okay? The third thing and last is haptic gloves. Okay, 
I'll believe it when I see it. I'm pretty sure that's in the roadmap and we might be seeing a prototype of it, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Let's move along. Now, supposedly, Samsung's coming out with augmented reality glasses and there have been leaked videos. I haven't really spent time looking for those leaked videos. The reason why I'm showing you this is because just to let you know that Samsung is yet another player in the augmented reality glasses space. I'm going to continue. Then we have Oculus Quest 3. This article um, apparently was published about a month ago, and it says here, rumors, predictions, and likely release date. Not really sure if this is a augmented reality thing. I see this more as a virtual reality, and sure enough, it's a virtual re reality headset. So I apologize. I just went and clicked on the links of the previous article, and this is what it opened up, and I just thought, you know, it they could have mentioned something about AR, but it isn't. Okay, let's move on to the next tab. Okay, so this article by wearable.com actually lists current augmented reality glasses. Now I'm going to go ahead here. They mention Facebook and supposedly Facebook has a partnership with Ray-Ban glasses. So maybe everybody's thinking that Will it look like the Aviator Ray-Bans? I don't think so, but it's they're just partnering with um, uh, Ray-Bans. Um, also moving down, Amazon. Not sure if these are going to be AR glasses. Okay, here it says here, unlike Google Glass, they're not AR. Okay, they're not AR, so let's skip that. Of course, we know about Snap Spectacles, fourth generation or fourth version of that. And like I said, I will put that link to the description of me just touching upon it so you can click right here. Then we move on down. So Lenovo is coming up with a Think Reality A3. Now, not really sure if this is going to be true augmented reality, but they put it on the list anyway. And then there's like a whole bunch of other third party classes that are probably going to try to somehow get into the AR space. And if not, at least get into the virtual reality space. And then there's Microsoft HoloLens too. Now, the problem with Microsoft HoloLens 2 is the price, 3500 and this is US. So definitely the price is a barrier for mainstream adoption. And if anybody is using Microsoft HoloLens 2, it's most likely um, really, really techy, gadgety people that can afford the money and just play around and say that they have it for a cool factor. Maybe a niche group of developers who are developing stuff for Microsoft or enterprise. Okay, let's go to the next tab. What do we have here? Oh my gosh, yes, Magic Leap. So I've been following Magic Leap, I think for almost a decade now. And again, their price point is a little bit less than Microsoft HoloLens, but it's still pretty high. And I'm not sure what the traction is for the market, but again, this is like few and far between. I really don't think that this is mainstream friendly. What would be mainstream friendly is Snap's Spectacles. Now, this is their version 4. The thing is, they are not uh, making it available to the public. They are only uh, giving these spectacles to augmented reality creators so that they could have the spectacles in their hands and, uh, you know, go to, go to town with their creativity and create content um, using the spectacles glasses. The one thing about this is, you do need to download, I guess, the Snap software, but the good thing is apparently you can share your experiences on other platforms. So that's a, that's a really good um, thing to note. Now, over here, just yesterday, I think, or earlier today, can't even remember, um, I saw a tweet from Mashable, and just funny to note that it says, finally, a camera for your Apple Watch. I don't even know why I have this in this video, but I just thought that was really funny because, number one, do we really need a camera for our Apple Watch, especially when Spectacles has a camera feature where you can walk around and record exactly what you're looking? So right away, Snap's version 4 Spectacles blows this Apple Watch camera out of the water. Just saying. I keep saying a lot about just saying. And then here's Mashable's um, Apple Watch video. I'm not going to you know, do it. Not going to play it. I will put the link in the description or you can just Google it. Now, in terms of augmented reality, 
I know in a few videos I did mention about attending a augmented reality conference in Frankfurt, Germany way back in 2009, 2010. So what I did was I revisited my Flickr photo albums and I just wanted to show you something. So here is, what's it called? Here is my photo album and these are the two I guess, albums of me depicting uh, what happened at these augmented reality conferences. So the first one was a conference where it brought together business, marketing, and enterprise. And they kind of like discussed what the future of augmented reality could be and would be in a business use case in enterprise and how to market it. So I'm just going to go through quickly the photos of this augmented reality, or actually it's the it's an AR dev camp, and it was in Frankfurt. The other one was actually in Berlin. Now I'm going to share this album here. I can put the link in the description too for you guys to browse if you want. But actually this one, this AR dev camp, was the first augmented reality centric conference or get together. We actually had Ori Inbar. Now Ori Inbar is um, someone who created oh, it was Augmento in uh, New York City. And Augmento was like one of the first companies that got funded for augmented reality projects. So here we stream Ori Inbar from Skype. And I was super excited because I did my homework before attending this augmented reality dev camp. So of course, Ori Inbar came up in the search. And I didn't realize that he was going to be in the in the actual conference or, you know, workshop, but he was, and I was just really thrilled. It was like having a celebrity of augmented reality. So Ori Inbar was the founder of Augmento, and they did a lot in terms of augmented reality and mobile gaming applications. I will put all these links in the description so you can go ahead and read about them. There is an Augmento YouTube channel. If you guys are interested about learning, you know, like what Augmento was all about and the first augmented reality company that was ever funded by VCs, their last video was eight years ago, just so you know. Now, going back to my Flickr album, let's go through a few of the pictures at the first European augmented reality business conference or hashtag ArbConEU. I hope this is the right tab. Uh, yes, it is. So it was very interesting. There was a lot of business and marketing people. As you can tell by the suits. Oh my goodness. I forgot his name. Dan. Oh, I forgot their names, but yes. You know what? So nostalgic right here. There is a few videos that I want to show you, but let's see. Um, and there are companies that I can actually mention that were here, except, you know what, it's been so long that I, do, I really don't remember. Here's the dev camp. No, not the dev camp. Yes, it was the dev camp. And we had actually a lot of interesting companies that showed us their prototypes for, I guess, gaming or business cases. I'm trying to see if there's a, like, here's a video here. I don't think you'll hear any sound. Uh, his name is Lukas from Poland. So that's the marker, augmented reality marker. And there's a reptile on a rock. Okay, well, just saying. Now, I actually ended up going to Ori Inbar's LinkedIn, just so you know if you want to connect with him for questions. So right now he is deep into the topic of spatial computing. And this company right here called awexr.com, they're actually going to be having um, a conference uh, in November. So you can sign up for that. You can also visit the website. Not sure if it's going to be physical because of COVID, but hopefully it is. And I don't know, I think, I think the more involved we get into conferences and workshops with augmented reality, the better we'll have an understanding of how we can fit in and how the future is going to look like. 
Here's another really good YouTube video that Ori Inbar is talking about. And this was back in 2018. And he really is talking about the augmented reality cloud. Now, that is really interesting. I won't go into that. If you want, I can, you know, do a video specifically on this topic. But, you know, I'm going to put the links in the description below and you can just do your own research or, you know, view it at your own pleasure. There is an interesting video again with Ori Inbar, but this time, uh, this is or this is this year in March 2021, and this is where he really talks about spatial computing among other things. But I specifically chose this clip just so you can, you know, get a snippet of how he sees spatial computing. Okay, I hope you can hear it. Let's play it. Would you like to talk a little bit about spatial computing and what are the opportunities you see? opening up with spatial computing when, when it matures? Yeah, you know, we, 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 there were a few names to describe this new wave um, because it's, it's kind of hard to, to, to grasp. Um, you know, people were calling it AR or VR and you know, later XR is kind of an overarching term um, and, uh, and many other terms, actually, that a lot of them were forgotten so far. Uh, but I think spatial computing is probably the best way to describe this new wave uh, because it kind of touches on how it's different than anything else before that. Uh, before that, you know, we're cons consuming com uh, information from computers through a two-dimensional screen, whether it's, you know, a desktop or, or a mobile device or a tablet. Uh, but still, the interaction is through a two-dimensional screen. And what separates sep uh, spatial computing from, from what we've experienced so far is the fact that you're interacting in space, um, whether it's through a, a, a two-dimensional screen or through glasses or or headset, uh, it doesn't matter. But you still move around in a space, and uh, the virtual content behaves just like real content in the, in the real world, right? So when you move your head, the object looks uh, different from different angles, and so so that's why you know I personally like the, the term spatial computing as a way to describe this whole movement, this whole new wave. Um, but it's been kind of uh, challenging, I think, to, to kind of uh, get this term to, to stick. Uh, people still like to, to get attached to the, the acronyms, you know, the, the AR, the VR, uh, which, which is kind of confusing to the, the audience at large. All, all of these emerging technologies, whether it's AR, VR, MR, 5G, IoT, artificial intelligence, it's got this huge hype, but yet we haven't seen transformational use cases. Where do you think, or, or what are the use cases you think, or, or the which industries you think are going to create the most transformational values in 2021 and 2022, in the immediate future? Well, now I'm going to stop right there because that was a really, really good question. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. So at the beginning of this video, when I covered different types of AR glasses, now I know I didn't mention Apple AR glasses, which may be announced in a week's time in WWDC. Now I had totally forgotten to mention Apple's AR glasses, but I am not discounting them. Now I said that I was going to make a point in covering the different AR glasses. And my point is, is that most of these glasses are still ecosystem centric. And what I mean by that is that should Apple AR glasses actually come to fruition, it probably is going to be tied to their iPhone or Apple Watch. And what that means is that for those people who do not own an iPhone or an Apple Watch, then it's a no go. Now, if and when Google Glasses comes into fruition, perhaps it'll be tied to the Android mobile operating system. Now, I'm not really sure about any of this. Um, I'm just speculating. I hope I'm completely wrong because honestly, I just wish that they could just all get together, share each other's technology. And I really feel that if they did that, it would really advance augmented reality to where it needs to be right now and everybody would just benefit. So how does this tie in with OVR.AI? Good question. If you want to know how this video ties in, then subscribe to this channel so you can watch the next episode. Because in the next episode, I will be talking about a hypothetical with OVR.AI. And if you liked this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you want to hear about the latest developments in the OVR.AI project and what the community is doing. Oh, and one thing. 
I'm really excited because on May 30th, there's going to be a 1 million token burning party. What does that even mean? Okay, so OVR.ai is holding a party for its community members and they're going to burn 1 million OVR tokens. It's not a physical burn. Basically, what they're doing is they're going to take 1 million tokens out of existence. And what that means is that the value of the OVR token and the land is going to go up. So I'm really looking forward to the party. There's going to be an amazing DJ called Mathame Mathem. And there's also going to be 12 NFTs that are going to be dropped. So I'm so, so super excited. So if you want to be part of that, then you need to join OVR.ai. And I will put the links to the main Telegram group and, of course, the website. So wherever you are in this world, have a great day, have a great night, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.